All right, let's get right into it. For as long as we've been dreaming of the stars, there's been this one ingredient that separates our biggest science fiction ideas from actual scientific fact. It's the secret sauce for faster than light travel, for shortcuts across the cosmos, for tech we can barely even wrap our heads around. And it's called exotic matter. I mean, really think about it for a second. What would it actually take to build something like the Alcubierre warp drive or a stable wormhole you could actually fly a ship through? Is it just a really, really hard engineering problem? Or is there some fundamental piece of the universe that we're missing? Well, it turns out there is. The answer to that question, it's a substance with properties so bizarre, so counterintuitive, they seem to flat out break the known rules of physics. So today, we're going on a hunt for this seemingly impossible ingredient, exotic matter. And here's the wild part. Einstein's own theory of general relativity, it actually allows for these crazy ideas. The math for warp drives and wormholes, it checks out. But there's always a but, isn't there? It comes with a very steep price, a very specific and very, very strange requirement for the stuff you build it with. And this is it. At its heart, exotic matter is basically anything that violates what physicists call the energy conditions. Now you can think of these as the basic common sense rules that normal matter and energy are supposed to play by. And the most famous, most important property of exotic matter is that it can have negative energy density, which would create, get this, repulsive gravity. So to really get what makes something exotic, we first have to understand the rule book it's tearing up. These energy conditions, they're basically gravity's guardrails. They're the rules that keep reality as you and I know it from going completely off the rails. Let's just put it side by side. Normal matter, you, me, the earth, the sun, it all has positive energy. It pulls things together with gravity and it makes light rays bend toward each other. Exotic matter though does the exact opposite. It has negative energy, it pushes things apart with anti-gravity, and this is the key, it makes light rays spread out or diverge. That diverging property is exactly what you would need to prop open the throat of a wormhole and stop it from collapsing. It's the secret ingredient. Now, of all these rules, the null energy condition, the NEC, that's the big one. It's kind of the last line of defense for classical physics. It basically says that no matter what, even for a beam of light, energy has to look positive. To build a stable wormhole or a warp drive, you have to find a way to break this rule. And for a very long time, that was considered a complete deal breaker. End of story. But then we found a loophole, a big one. And that loophole is called quantum mechanics. You see, it turns out the universe is way, way weirder than our classical rule book ever imagined. And it's already shown us that this rule-breaking matter is very, very real. And here's our first piece of solid evidence, the Casimir effect. It was predicted way back in 1948, and we've proven it in the lab. The idea is, if you take two perfectly smooth metal plates and put them incredibly close together in a total vacuum, they actually get pushed together. Why? Because the quantum foam of virtual particles between the plates is quieter than the foam outside them. This difference creates a tiny region of real, measurable negative energy density. I just want you to let that sink in for a second. This isn't just some theory on a chalkboard. The Casimir effect is hard scientific proof that negative energy is a real physical thing. Nature breaks its own rules, at least down on the quantum scale. Okay, so here's the catch. While negative energy is real, it's not a free lunch. There are other rules called quantum energy inequalities, and they act like a kind of cosmic banker. The universe will let you borrow a little bit of negative energy for a very, very short time, but you have to pay it back almost instantly with an even bigger burst of positive energy right next to it. This makes scooping up enough of it to build a wormhole, well, let's just say it's incredibly challenging. But just knowing that it's possible, that has kicked off a massive hunt. And right now, that hunt is happening in three incredible arenas. Out in the mind-boggling scale of the cosmos, deep inside our most powerful particle labs, and, you're not going to believe this, even inside our own technology. So our first clue comes from deep space a recent event that's been labeled AT 2025 OOLS. The LIGO Gravitational Wave Observatory saw this massive explosion, a super kilonova, but the signal was weird. The data just didn't fit a typical neutron star collision. The best explanation we have? The merger of two strange stars. These are hyper-dense cores made of something called strange quark matter. This could be our first direct observation of stable, macroscopic exotic matter out there in the wild. Clue number two comes from the lab. 
Over at CERN, physicists have been discovering a whole new particle zoo. We thought we had the building blocks figured out, right? Particles made of two quarks or three quarks. But nope. Recent discoveries like the TC++ tetraquark and strange pentaquarks prove that matter can stick together in these bizarre four and five quark combinations. We are literally making microscopic exotic matter to order. And now for our third clue. And this one is an absolute mind bender. It's coming from our own technology. Just this year, Microsoft announced their Majorana 1 chip. It works by creating these engineered exotic things called Majorana Zero modes. Now, they aren't fundamental particles, but they act like half electrons. By weaving or braiding these exotic states, they can perform quantum calculations that are almost immune to errors. Just think about that. We have gone from wondering if exotic matter exists to engineering it to build revolutionary new computers. So where is all of this taking us? We're finding exotic matter in the cosmos, we're creating it in our labs, and we're starting to build with it. This isn't just about finding new materials anymore. This is leading us to engineer a whole new reality, and it's forcing us to rethink the very fabric of space-time itself. But first, let's just quickly clear up a really common sci-fi trope. For decades, people wondered, hey, what about antimatter? Does it have anti-gravity? Well, the Alpha-G experiment at CERN finally settled it last year. They measured it. The result? Antimatter falls down. At 1G, just like regular matter. So as cool as it is, it's not the exotic stuff we're looking for to build a warp drive. But all this incredible progress has led to an even more radical question. After searching all this time for a substance, for a thing to prop open a wormhole, what if we've been looking in the wrong place entirely? What if you don't need exotic matter at all? This is the bleeding edge idea of the defect wormhole. It's a new theory that suggests instead of using a physical substance with negative energy, you could use a kind of flaw, a defect, in the geometry of space-time itself. This geometric wrinkle would mimic the effects of exotic matter, keeping the wormhole open without a single exotic particle in sight. It completely shifts the problem from a search for materials to a question of pure geometry. So let's just take a step back and look at the scorecard for late 2025. The whole landscape is just amazing. You've got these defect wormholes, which are still purely theoretical, but then you have strange stars, which we've now actually observed. We're engineering Majorana quasi-particles for computers and discovering new tetraquarks in the lab. The term exotic matter isn't just one single thing anymore. It's a whole frontier of physics, stretching from the purely theoretical to the actually tangible. Which really just leaves us with one final kind of staggering thought. We've watched these ideas go from theory to observation to actual engineering. So what happens when today's exotic, this impossible ingredient from science fiction, becomes tomorrow's everyday, off-the-shelf building material? What will we build then?